Hey, it's Sean here from P2R. Today we got 10 brand new J30A4 cylinder blocks that just came in. However, the way the person uh, who packaged them shipped them didn't necessarily pack them the best. So this one actually got a little bit of damage on it. You can see that the actual oil pump itself got a hole in it. So what I wanted to do was just use this opportunity to take apart this block, see what else is actually wrong with it, and actually let you guys just see the overall process of disassembling the motor. I'm working on the floor today because I don't want to actually put this up on the stand or anything, but I'm just going to go ahead, you know, basically a J3084 um, teardown. Let's get right to it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take the side engine mount bracket off. These are actually pretty tight. And um, Honda puts Loctite on these as well from factory. I'll go ahead and loosen them all up by hand first before I switch over to the gun. Actually, this bottom one is definitely one that has a lot of Loctite on it. You can feel how tight it is. It almost feels like if the threads are stripped, even though it's not. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a number 12 as well. Get the oil pump or the oil filter assembly loosened off. All right, that should be it for everything that's gonna be actually too tight for just using the gun. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over. All right, so this is your oil filter assembly and you got your VTEC solenoid right here. That's the first thing coming off. This one actually has a broken um, oil pressure switch that was on there that got hit along with the oil pump. I've also noticed that the crank snout itself got a little bit hit too. So whatever hit this hit it pretty hard. You can see all the curb rash on the oil pump. I'm going to switch to my 14 and get this side engine mount bracket off. This bracket is actually one of the first things that always breaks um, anytime people are in car accidents. So it's always good to have these with Bryce brand new threads. That's really nice. Now we got to the water pump. That's pretty simple as it's only number 10s. All of them. Get my foot head. Let's look one more time and make sure everything is out, which we are. This has two dowel pins that kind of hold it in place. And there we go. We got our water pump off. The next step is really for me to lower is to me to flip the block upside down to get the oil pan off, but I'm gonna go ahead and get all the side oil pump bolts off while I'm here one time. These also have Loctite on them, so you'll hear the gun at the very beginning kind of um, working a little bit hard, and that's just as it works through the red Loctite that Honda puts on them. All right, so all the oil pump bolts are off. However, I can't take the oil pump out yet because we got to go ahead and get the block flipped upside down so we can get out the oil pan off first. Actually, I'm going to rotate the block this way and take the um, rear main seal plate off or the bolts for it before I flip the block upside down. Just like everything else, these have Loctite on them as well too. I mean, this is a zero mile brand new engine. You really can't tell because there's a lot of dirt on here. 
wherever this was stored, it was definitely not stored well and was outside in the elements. Uh, it had a bag on it, but the bag was torn. You can see there's a lot of debris on the cylinders. Um, you know, just improperly storing of a new engine. There's still a lot of the grease Honda puts in there to keep it from ever rusting. So the actual cylinder walls are fairly okay. Um, I mean, everything here is pretty well, but definitely not kept as stored in a nice, in a nice way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this block flipped over. All right, so these don't have any Loctite on them, like how the rest of the bolts that we've taken off so far. However, when you Honda Bond seal the wall pump, or the wall pan, sorry, you, when you put it through, you'll see there's a little bit of Honda Bond on the tip of these bolts. So some of these will be a little bit tight for the first few threads as well, but it's because of Honda Bond rather than Loctite. So I just work my way around, get all these out. When you're disassembling an engine, especially if you're going to be reusing a lot of the parts, it's always good to keep things together. In this case, uh, the oil pan bolts, I'm going to keep them all together. I like to ziplock it in a little bag, right on it, what it is. The easy part, what makes it nice is that on a Honda oil pan for a J-Series, there's only two bolt lengths that are used. You've got a 32 millimeter long and you've got a 50 millimeter long. So essentially on the oil pan, you have short and long and you can sell basically where, where each one goes. You can see the oil pan area is a little bit thicker here and it's a little thinner here. So here you would know you use a 32 and in a taller spot, you'll know you use the, the 50 mil. Now that all the bolts are out, Honda actually put a little spot here where you can pry on either side of the block. So if you take the flathead and you put it there, so you see Honda put that spot right there and that allows you to pry it up without actually damaging either the block or the actual maiden surface for the oil pan itself. So with the oil pan off, Lift it up and out. You can see this engine's never been run. It's nice and clean. Just a little bit of assembly lube essentially in there. This block obviously wasn't stored properly. You can see we got a little bit of rust on the baffle plate, but um, it's not too much to worry about. We're just gonna continue moving forward. All right, once you take that out, we have our crank exposed. You can see we got our crank, we got our rods, we got our main caps. Now, one thing a lot of people tend to forget when they're taking these engines apart, they take these bolts out and then they wonder why the actual crank won't come out. You gotta remember, this is a four bolt main. We got two bolts going in from the top and we got two bolts coming in from the side. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen the side bolts here first and then we're gonna go ahead and take out these bolts next. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just get the rear main seal plate out and the oil pump. And got the rear main, it has a brand new rear main seal on it. Take that off, set that aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the bolts for the rear main seal plate and put those together with it as well so we know exactly where those go. Next step, I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil pan off, the oil pump off. And even with these, you want to make sure you're hitting in the right spot so you're not putting any damage onto the surface or mating areas of this. You want to make sure this stays actually nice and smooth. This has Honda Bond that we'd have to scrape off if you're ever going to put back on where we use the oil pump. But you don't want to put the flathead anywhere where you can damage the surface. That way we never have to worry about any leaks in the future. I got all my 
oil pump bolts that I took off. In this case, we know that oil pump is, a, is garbage and it's a throwaway because it has a hole in it, but I'm still gonna go ahead and put the bolts together with it so that everything is, we know what it's for. The side main bolts are gonna be a 14. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my ratchet over to a 14. And we're gonna start by loosening all the side ones. I'm just gonna go ahead and crack them loose. A little bit easier, the block is facing down. I can literally just put my strength into it or my weight into it, whatever weight I do have. I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna go to the next side so I can push down again. I don't wanna, I don't wanna lift up and work harder than I need to. Pushing down is always easier than pulling. So those are all out and we're gonna go on to these next. But before I do that, I don't wanna actually take anything of my rotating assembly out until I clean up my work area a little bit move some of the stuff out of the way so that as I take each piston and rod out, I can rest it down on a nice clean area and not get any dirt or debris on those parts. So give me a minute to clean up and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to loosen all these top ones first. Kinda kinda hold the block steady as we do it. Let me get over it, sorry. And one more. Okay. All right, so now that I got all the top ones loose, I'm gonna go ahead and take the sides out. I'm gonna go ahead and take all the top ones out as well. The next step we really gotta take out is the actual rods themselves, because the rod is gonna come out together with the piston. These, they use a multi-point uh, 10 to get these out. So you're gonna need a 12.10, sorry is the word I was looking for, to get those out. The reason I loosened all these up is because it's just gonna allow me to spin the crank a little bit easier. Um, we don't necessarily have to actually pull the main caps out yet, but it's just gonna make for everything to be a little bit easier. Also, Honda gave us some nice spots that we can actually put like a flat head or something to get these main caps out. Um, but I don't really like using that method a lot because you can always put a little scratch on the block that I'm never really too happy with. My favorite method is just to take the actual two bolts that are on the main cap and it allows you to rock it like this and you kind of pull up while you're doing it. And then once it's loose, you're literally able to just take the main cap and lift it out. Almost there. and pretty much out. However, if it's still giving you a little bit of hassle, you can go in here with the flathead and just push up a hair and you won't actually scratch the surface. So there we go. That's uh, main cap number four. Now these are numbered. Uh, pretty much like almost every Honda engine, you're gonna start at the timing belt and they're gonna be labeled one, two, three, and four. And you're all, the arrow's always gonna face towards the timing belt. So. The main cap one with an arrow facing at the timing belt, main cap two arrow facing towards the timing belt. That way, if you, when you take all these out, if you set them aside, you know where to replace them. You know, Honda made it easy with an arrow because you know some people might try to go this way, but this is pointing against or away from the timing belt. So you know you make sure you always want to face the timing belt and the arrow goes that direction. So we'll go ahead and take the rest of this one aside. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rods. That's my first step. The bolts are out. The rod cap will just come off like that. Once that's off, you literally can just take your two fingers and push down. You wanna make sure you also hold it at the bottom so that the rod doesn't scratch the cylinder wall on its way out of the block. When you go to put your cap back on, if you go the wrong way, you can see that we have kind of like a harsh line here that doesn't look accurate. If I flip this around, you'll see that when I close it up, 
that line almost disappears. So you can tell that was the right way. Besides, obviously, this one is actually marked. They're not always marked like this. Sometimes they have a number, and you'll want to make sure that that number is written on both sides. So let me um, go ahead and put the screws in here, and you'll better see what I'm saying. I'm just going to cinch it up a little bit. And look how nice and close that line is. You really can't see it. If you were put on the wrong way, it'd be a pretty aggressive gap there because they're not like cut evenly on both sides. So there we go. We got a piston and a rod out. This one, I mean, it's a little bit tight and this motor's just been sitting for so long. You can see a little bit of the dirt and rust that I was talking about. It's just this motor, um, again, stored improperly. It's unfortunate, brand new parts, but definitely would need to clean up properly if we wanted to reuse any of this. So we got one out. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm gonna go ahead and do the one right here because these are the two highest ones that I can easily reach with my gun. If I try to do like this down here, my gun might not necessarily reach. So I'm gonna do the ones that are very easy. And after I get all the ones that are at this high point, I'll go ahead and spin the crank and get the ones that are a little bit lower. So again, I'll take my, main, my rod cap and I'm gonna go ahead and try to push this one out by hand. And as I get close to the bottom, I'm gonna put my hand in a ready position to accept the fallen piston and rod to keep it from scratching the cylinder wall. In this case, I got this one out properly, held it, didn't hit the ground everything together. You don't want to mix match the lower rod end to the top as that will not work out well. You always want to make sure the rods are kept together. So I mentioned earlier, well, the reason I loosened all these up, because now that I want to bring like this rod up higher, I can now actually just take this and spin the motor or spin the crank easier. Still a little bit tight. And with it being that tight, I'm going to go ahead and loosen or take out this one, one time. All right. It's like the first one, this rod bearing fell out with it, doing it like that. You always put that tang in first, and then you can slide it down into place. Go ahead and made it back up with its proper cap. These ones are very easy to see because Honda actually lasered them with some blue ink there. Get this closed back up. Another thing I like to show you guys is if you look at this rod, there's a, there's a color right here. You can see in this case it's blue. That is the um, tolerance and basically what size bearing Honda put in this rod. So, um, you know, Honda offers a, a wide range of different bearings for basically how loose or how tight things are going to be. And in this case, this is a blue rod bearing. So anytime you're looking and um, you have a couple of areas you can find out what is what. On the bottom of the block, we have um, four letters here. And this is um, actually going to tell you what is used for the main bearings, which are the ones that are inside of the main cap. I think I'm gonna try to spin the crank now and see if I can get it to spin a little bit easier. Still tight, man. Yeah, this one's still tight. I'm gonna go the other direction. See if that makes it a little bit easier for me.
All right, so we got all of our pistons and rods out. The only thing left here now is we got two more main caps and we got the crank. This crank should spin pretty freely now. As you can see, I can literally just turn it. Really what was hanging up a little bit was the walls weren't as clean or as smooth as normal. So it was a little bit harder, but you can see this comes out easy. So you can rotate the crank so you can get clean access to these um, points to pull, the, to pull it out. Yeah, again, I like to loosen it up a little bit before I go ahead and put the, the flathead in there so I can pry it up pretty easy. Set that aside. We got one more. Um, I see I can rotate it. Oh, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the crank. Get this out the way so I have clean access to getting the flathead in there, almost a smooth angle. And as I just pull up a little bit, it comes in up and out. All right, so all the main caps are out, and the last step here pretty much is for me to go ahead and just lift the crank out. However, you have to understand on this one, which is number, we got one, two, three. On number three, we're gonna have our thrust washers. That's what keeps the crank from front and back movement, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna lift that out, and know that those two thrust washers are gonna possibly fall out. In this case, yep, one did just fall out on me. Set the crank aside, and we have our thrust washers right here. You can just push, as you see, it comes out. We got a thrust washer. Set those aside. And before I actually just move along from this block, I want to go ahead and put the main caps back in. You never want to separate main caps from a block because if you do, chances are you might not be ever be able to reuse that block without doing a line home. And even then, sometimes line home won't always work out. So in this case, I know the bearings are brand new. They look great. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this back down into place. If you got a rubber mallet, once everything is lined up, you can go ahead and tap it to get it down. That's number three. The next one I grab is indeed number two. So I'll go ahead and put it there. Get the dowel pins going down and tap it with the rubber mallet. Next one I got is number four. Dowel pins down. And my last one is gonna be number one, of course. And again, arrow facing towards the timing belt side. Dowel pins in. And we tap it. These, I'm gonna go ahead and catch everything by hand. Make sure they're screwing in nice and smooth. I've done that. I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the process and get them down. I don't really want to apply any torque pressure or anything. I'm just trying to keep the main caps in place. So as soon as they click, I'm off. All right, block is fully disassembled. I'm going to go ahead now. Got two nice little handles to rotate this back up. As you can see, this block is a little bit dirty, but flip it over and there we go. We got a bare J30A4 block now. Cranks 
You're always going to have some information on here, which is also going to go ahead and give you your information on your bearing colors and sizes for both main and rods. So you see we up here we have an EDCCCD, and here we got a 2343. Three. If your crank is actually um, not too worn, a lot of times you can still see that information and you'll know what bearings came on there originally. Most of the builds we do here, we're using the ACL race bearings, so we kind of ignore this information and we check our clearances and we machine accordingly for our builds. Hope you guys learned something today. And um, again, it's just a basic disassembly with J30A4. Uh, really nothing here I'm really gonna reuse, except for the, possibly the block itself. Uh, we don't typically get too many builds for J30s in general, but there are some series and some people that are racing that require three liters only. And we would like to be able to support those guys again as well too. So um, if you like this video, want to continue to um, watch, please like, please subscribe, hit that bell icon. We're trying to grow the channel and we need your support and we hope we're teaching you something along the way. Thank you for watching.